before I get started with the story, two things. Shout out to Adrian Thomas for sending me the article. And number two, I have to correct myself from a previous video that I did involving Ahmaud Arbery. The house that he walked into, it is not being built. It was actually being renovated. And and I kind of, and I don't know why I didn't see that Um, at first, considering when they showed him walking toward the house from the front, it looked done, but towards the back, that's where it looks like how it looks on the screen. But I wanted to come back on here and talk about some additional information about Larry English, who was the homeowner for this house right here, in which he has now come out and said that he may not even want to move into this community right now because he is receiving death threats. Hmm, I wonder why. If y'all remember the video I just recently did, he came out and said he doesn't believe that was Ahmaud Aubrey who walked into his house. He doesn't believe he doesn't know the McMichaels. And he said that this was a clearing hate crime. Basically, I believe he's receiving these death threats because he got off code a few times. And when you get off code in the palm colored world, even one time, that's too many. But to get off a few times, that's over. That's overboard. I truly believe that's why he's actually receiving threats from other people of his ilk. Not saying that he is like that. But when I say of his ilk, I mean of his of his background. Now, how's that for some quote unquote unity? Let me go ahead and read this article. Larry English had long dream of owning a waterfront home. It was on his bucket list. He wanted easy access to fish and boat and a peaceful distraction from the stress of his heart related illness. His dream home is under construction in Brunswick, Georgia, but English said it is unlikely he and his family will ever move into the home once it is complete. Now it's honestly not safe, said his attorney, Elizabeth Grady. It's supposed to be a place for comfort and peace, and now it will be forever associated with this tragedy. English, age 50, owns the house that Ahmaud Arbery, a 25-year-old black man, purportedly entered before he was shot and killed February 23rd by two white men. Gregory McMichael, age 64, and Travis McMichael, age 34, were arrested and charged on Thursday with murder and aggravated assault two days after a graphic video of the shooting of Aubrey became public. The video of the fatal shooting thrust the case into the national spotlight, prompting widespread outrage and raising concerns about why it took the law enforcement officials more than two months to make the arrest and the killing. English has received death threats since arrests were made in the case, his attorney said in an interview Monday night speaking on behalf of her client. She said English and his wife are heart sick for Arbery's parents. See, and that's the thing that goes against the code. You're not supposed to feel bad for the victim, especially if they're black and you are a Caucasian individual. Video from the day of Arbery's death obtained by the Atlanta Journal Constitution shows a black man wearing a t-shirt and shorts walking up to a house under construction, entering and then leaving shortly after. Lawyers pr representing Arbery's family said in a Saturday statement that the security camera video proves Arbery did nothing wrong prior to the fatal encounter. Arbery did not take anything from the construction site. That was strike one. They weren't supposed to say that. They were supposed to go along with the narrative that a lot of their palm colored cohorts put out there. And that was that he stole something. He did not cause any damage to the property. Strike two. That goes against the other narrative. See, the thing is, like I said, this family is receiving threats from others that look like them because they got off code. They were supposed to villainize Ahmaud Arbery the way that they are doing. And see, they feel that by them doing this, it's going to throw a wrench into the case in which it will not look good for the McMichaels. It says he remained for a brief period of time and was not instructed for anyone to leave, but rather left on his own accord to continue his job. Amon's actions at this empty house under construction were in no way a felony under Georgia law. Trespassing is only a misdemeanor, by the way. But the way that they're treating it, you would think that they would have gave him a felony. 
The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says that it was reviewing the video, but added that the agency has seen it before arresting and charging Gregory and Travis McMichael. The McMichaels could not be reached for comment. Grady said her comment, I'm sorry, her client wants to correct the mistaken impression that English has shared this video or any information about what has occurred at the property with the McMichaels prior to their fatal encounter with Aubrey or at all. English had only briefly met the younger McMichael once in 2019 when he came to the construction site to introduce himself. Okay, now I know why they, they threw that in there because in the original video that I did before this one, he has stated that he didn't know the McMichaels. He never met them. So he's correcting himself now and said that he briefly met the son, Travis McMichael, when he just came over and inquired um, about that residence and just introduced himself. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting how Travis McMichael went over and introduced himself to this Larry English guy who is a, I can all, I can just pretty much say it is a uh, Caucasian male and just introduced him, introduced himself like it was nothing, just casual. But when it came to Ahmaud Arbery, he was met with a lot of resistance. He was met with a gun and a pickup truck. I wonder if Ahmaud Aubrey was the owner of that house. Would Travis McMichael or his dad came over and introduced themselves to him? I wonder. English a beekeeper said he was working in Douglas about 90 miles away from Brunswick where he lives with his wife and two children on February 23rd, unaware of the tragedy. That was unfolding. He got an alert on his phone that a video had been taken on the construction site. He worked for another 20 minutes and then washed up. After he observed the video and the alert, he called the neighbor and learned Aubrey had been killed that day. English gave the video from his home to Glen County Police soon after the shooting. He never used the word burglary. He says, my client did not want people to come onto the property because it's just not safe. Even if there had been a robbery, however, the English family would not have wanted vigilante to occur and i'm not i'm gonna stop right there because it's pretty much reiterating some text that i already read in the previous video oh but you know what i'll real read this one part right here it says the brunswick news citing documents obtained through a public records request reported that there had been just one confirmed burglary in the neighborhood from january 1st to february 23rd the theft of the handgun from an unlocked truck parked outside travis mcmichael's house on january the first so you're talking about almost two whole months and with the homeowner Larry English saying that nothing was stolen, that means there was only one burglary. And the gun that was taken was out of Travis McMichael's unlocked truck. Doesn't mean that Ahmaud Aubrey was the one that took the gun. It could have been anybody. And you left your truck unlocked. So whose fault is that? It's probably someone that he knows. But, you know. I'm not, you know, I'm not even going to say what I was getting ready to say, but y'all can pretty much guess where I was headed with this. But I just wanted to bring that to you. Like I said, this is we're we're going to be here a while. That's going to be the mantra for this story. We're going to be here for a while. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next one.